this product we reviewed two and a half years ago with its counterpart the M Scalar. this is the core Dave for a full in-depth analysis review of this unit as a DAC I highly recommend checking out the video we previously did here we covered this unit extensively this product is now back for the re-review now unlike before I would like to review this mobile station because it really does feel as though you can take this to a hotel with you or you can take this to a holiday home with you or you can take it abroad with you it weighs five kilograms that's how big it is this is a 10,400 pounds unit and I want to do the review this time around exclusively as an all-in-one exclusively as your one and only system for your headphones your IEMs and your speakers and nothing else none of this stuff on my right just this using some of the best headphones in the industry Abyss AB1266 TC Dan Clark Stealth High Feynman Sesvaras Mad24 from Ambient Acoustics Spirit Torino Twin Pulse Binom ER etc shall we begin So for those of you who are familiar with our hobby, you know what this unit is. It's notorious, it's infamous, and it's still packing a serious punch despite its tiny size. Like I mentioned, this is a 10,400 pound unit. This is not cheap. But with all that out of the way, for those of you who are new, this is an amplifier DAC pre combo. Its job is to cover all bases for you. So let's do a quick tour of the unit, starting with the rear, because I think there are more interesting things happening back here than on the front. Pair of XLR outs and RCA outs. These can either be fixed or variable for direct line out, like we reviewed previously here, as a DAC only, or as a pre to go into a power amp or your studio monitors, etc. The XLR is obviously balanced and single-ended for the RCA. Then we have a pair of BNC. The BNC is usually for the digital inputs. And then we have USB, another pair of BNC. This is for its upsampling capability. Then we have AES. This is another digital input, obviously. And we have these four BNC connections, uh, like the TT2. They're still not being used. Uh, it's for a future product. And I've got a feeling this is what's going to be used for the Coral M Scaler upgrade coming soon. Just a hunch. And on the surface area of the unit on the right hand side, we have four buttons in a cross formation with a rotating volume pot. This is a digital volume pot, not analog. Be aware of that. Doubling up as mute and selection. Pressing up on the arrows obviously gets you into the menus where you can choose between four screens, um, cross feed and polarity, etc. And going right and left, usually you're, you can go between the inputs. Holding the left and right together will get you into and out of uh, fixed line mode or pre. Then we have this huge round hobbit hole screen. Um, with a square screen in the middle. Uh, this is, uh, some people like this, some people don't like this. I find it interesting. Uh, it's definitely interesting. So we have these beautiful curved sides. This thing is beautifully constructed. I mean, it's a cord product. You probably could kill a whale with it. Don't kill whales. We like those over here. Then we have the jack headphone out. This is single-ended. Um, Rob Watts over a cord uh, predominantly uses uh, single-ended through and through their entire system. So you're not gonna get any detriment for sound quality, by the way. This outputs 1.4 watts into 32 ohms, and I think it's about 150 megawatts into 300 ohms. Uh, the impedance of this is 0.55, full specification scrolling down the list. That is the unit, very small, very compact, and 
with 164,000 taps on the go for time in alignment, incisiveness, and well, we're going to talk about that in the sound section. With that, let's move on. Many of you would have stumbled upon this review for the very first time, so you would have missed a full in-depth review of the Dave and M Scaler we reviewed a couple of years ago. Review here. Predominantly, we concentrated on the DAC aspects and the upsampling aspects of the DAC, not as a whole all-in-one unit as is intended to be. Basically, a DAC, a pre, and a headphone amplifier. For somebody who really wants a tiny setup without any clutter, how does the Dave in 2023 perform? Also, which headphones does it drive extremely well and what other headphones does it struggle with? In that same manner, are there IEMs it can't drive? Are there planar headphones it has difficulty struggling? How about dynamic headphones? Here in the sound analysis, we endeavor to cover all of that. But as a quick refresher, let's discuss the sound quality of the Dave. So the tonality of the Dave, it's basically a dark black background where the music feels as though it's etched on this void. The way when you look up at the night sky and you see all the stars with the navy blue background of the sky and all the stars imposed upon it. That's what it feels like to me. The stage is grandiose very big, it's very incisive, separation between instruments is larger than life. Sometimes this can be a detriment, other times it's a strength, depending on the genres of music you're listening to. It's extremely quick, nimble and highly resolving. The headphone amplification sides of things follows along the same curve. It's basically very much feeling as though you are connected to the output stage of the DAC itself. It feels very transparent. It doesn't feel like there's a barrier in the way. It doesn't feel like there's a DAC, then there's an amp, then there's a driver. It feels as though you are directly connected to the output stage of the performance. So with that out of the way, Let's look at some of these headphones we have on the table and how it performs. Starting with this little beauty that just came in. This is the Dan Clark Stealth. The Dan Clark Stealth on the Dave feels as though you're out in your garden at midnight. It's pitch black, but all the illumination up there is derived from the moon and from the stars. So by that, what I mean is, it's a pitch black background. This headphone is highly susceptible to performance of the amplification and DAC. And its nuance feels as though it's not overly bright. Everything seems to be etched on that nice black background that the Dave provides. Stage is big. Honestly, I keep forgetting that the stealths are closed back. It's that open sounding and it drives them exceptionally well. This genuinely surprised me because the stealths for the bass response to really dig low takes a lot of oomph. But I don't feel as though I'm missing out on anything from the sub bass, the visceral impact, the stage, the layering between instruments, textural information, but the tonality is different, for example, like the Q-Style CMA15 or the LTA Z10E, even feeding the Dave. It really does feel as though I've directly plugged into the Dave's DAC and no amplification. It's a very odd scenario because of the ability of stealth changing depending on what equipment you put it on. But if you have a stealth and you have a tiny Dave on your desk, you can be assured it drives it perfectly adequately to an exceptional level. Though these are planar, they're 86 dB sensitivity, it doesn't seem to be having any problems in regards to that. Where the difficulty lies in regards to planar headphones is another one, the Hi-Fiman Sesvaras. Now that unit requires a tremendous amount of current. It's 81 
to 76 dB sensitivity. It's a very odd swing. It requires tremendous amounts of current. So at say 60 dB volume, you get excellent performance, textural information, sub bass wasn't feeling as though it was lacking, punch was there. But as soon as you go into the 70 dB category for classical, etc., it would start distorting. It could not cope with that specific headphone. The next one is this. This is the Binom ER, probably one of the most easiest to drive planars in the world. That includes the Meze Audio Elite, including its dynamic range. This on the Luxury and Precision P6 Pro is truly outstanding. Please check out the review here later if you fancy it. I forgot to mention, these are the fluffy couch pads, as I like to call it, neutral, flat, with an enormous amount of punch. We do have a similar scenario where it feels as though the Dave is imbibing its characteristics onto the drivers. These are another extraordinary resolving drivers uh, in the Binom ER. And that is that pitch black background, that illumination of every element of sound within the stage as if it's lit within with a soft white light. That's how I envision it. So that it feels as though it's non-fatiguing it's gentle on the eardrums, and yet it has the incisive characteristics, resolution and resolvability, macro dynamics where the track requires it. Now, this headphone is an intimate headphone. We're talking like the HD650 I have over there, or like the LCD5 um, we reviewed a couple of years ago, where stage is intimate to good. And on the Dave, where most of the time it seems to enhance the stage on a lot of headphones, uh, even on the Binom ER, it seems to give a very accurate representation of what the headphones are capable of. So therefore it doesn't overly stretch the image. And tracks from hip hop like Eminem, 50 Cent, Jay-Z, etc., a genre I don't really listen to that much anymore or swinging over to the electronic music like Monster Cat, Infected Mushroom and some of these other categories seems to be punchy, excellent sub bass, yet this is planar again, around 40 ohms and I think it was about 98 dB sensitivity. So it doesn't seem to be having any trouble in regards to this headphone as well. Now, shifting over the category of headphones, to something like the ZMF line. Let's start with this one. Now, this is one of my favorite dynamic headphones. This is the ZMF Verite Open, 300 ohm. Let's see how it does with this. Already, the volume is a lot quieter, obviously, than these binomials and not as quiet as the Stealths, obviously, for gain. Let's discuss the Verite Open, a very, very different sounding headphone to these two where uh, they're more reference, neutral, dark for the Binom ER, akin to the Atrium and the LCD5, though that does lead into the mid-range a lot more. Um, and the stealths are uh, just a piece of magic. They basically show what the instrument's doing. They're very, very neutral, very reference. Probably the best close back in the world right now and for engineers, sound guys, for those people who mix music, it might be the best headphone there is. I used to actually give that to the hi fi Mrs. Varus, but now, genuinely stealth, I think, uh, might be that. So please check out the review for that if it's already been released. Um, for the Verite Open, it's definitely more of a warmer sound. Those headphones, especially with the BE2 pads, uh, tend to be a little bit warm. Um, and also, not only that, it's a bit more brighter. It's a bit less of that, okay, it's a twilight environment where I'm listening to the track. No, it's more of a sunset, the orange kind of sunset sort of soundscape where you can see your surroundings very, very clearly. Everything's illuminated via the sun, but everything's very soft. Um, it's very punchy. You've got plenty of gain for that dynamic headphone, though it's 300 ohms, absolutely no problem. Akin to the ZMF Atriums, 
It's probably one of the best experiences on solid state I've had for the, some of the ZMF line of headphones. It's, it's truly fantastic in and all in one. It's special, it's very punchy, sub bass will dig low, it will pull out all the detail that the drivers are capable of. This polynathalate uh, and beryllium driver is extraordinarily quick. Like the twin poles from Spirit Torino that we reviewed, I think it was yesterday. Um, it's got the snap for EDM music, it's got the punch for metal with that very meaty electric guitar cabs coming through very very nicely. That track we just listened to, I'll put all of these tracks in the description down below because it's very difficult to keep stirring over there and switching over the screensavers from uh, the, to get hold of the track of the names with the screen reader. So I'll put it in the description. Um, was very much intimate sounding. So the over large sounding of Dave did collapse the stage and come in close, uh, but rather holographic. Singer was right there in front of me as if he was performing to me privately. Drums were behind him. Every instrument was very, very well presented. So we have gone from planar to dynamic headphones, to the line of ZMF headphones, absolutely no problem. I've tried it with the, even the HD650, that review will be coming just for nostalgia's sake on very high-end equipment, and it seems to be doing a fantastic job. So for a majority of headphones, as you can see, the Dave does perform very, very well. IEMs, right across the board. Ambient Acoustics Mad 24, Cadenza 12 from Lit Shaw, Twin Pulse from Spirit Torino, Avant from Sounds, QDC Tiger, Unique Melody Mess Mark II. Every IEM I have thrown on a Dave, it's been a desktop experience. Some of them taking the IEM into the headphone territory of performance, it's been exceptional. There are only a handful of headphones. I don't think the amplification of Dave drives very well, and that is the hi fi Mensis Varas, and maybe the Valkyria. Unfortunately, that wasn't in right now, so I couldn't check it for you guys, but I will put it in the description down below. I will see my friend most very, very shortly, and we'll put it on the Dave and have a listen to it and see where that performs. Those ridiculous drivers of the Valkyria sometimes does take a lot of oomph to uh, drive properly. Let's move over to using the Dave as an all-in-one on to a desktop speaker system setup scenario. Using the core Dave on the speakers behind me, they're powered monitors, the studio reference Mackie HR824 from the late 90s. They are over 20 years old and I've still not replaced them because I genuinely don't think anything matches them in $4,000 and under underneath. I genuinely don't think so. For that, the pre has been fantastic. It's quite transparent. You've got a nice range of volume going up and down. That's not an issue, but I always like to put an actual resistor between the DAC and between the amplification. I don't like digital volume. The Dave implements a digital volume, though quite safe and stuff. I've never had issues with it. It always worries me a little bit, especially these beasts. They're 250 watts a piece. They're monsters. And if, if something was to go wrong software-wise in the Mac, and you get that white noise distortion thing, uh, you don't wanna be doing that at 130 dB decibel noise, and basically it's a sign for divorce, right? Let alone your poor neighbors. So I always like to put a hard barrier between that, so I've been using the Pi as a pre, or my Z10E, and the Dave as a DAC, but as an all-in-one, it does work. It works very, very nicely. If you're planning to connect your studio monitors to it, you've got your stealth as your monitoring headphones and your listening experience and the Dave as an all-in-one. It works fantastically well. Obviously, you've got a slew of inputs for your uh, other peripherals if you need it, etc. Optical, coax, and BNC and stuff, so it's, it's very straightforward. You've got upsampling at your fingertips from the M scaler or HQ player. It's a tiny all-in-one unit, and even in 2023, this unit's almost seven years old now, I think, and it still doesn't have something to rival it. The low two desktop setup, I've been waiting for that to come in and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison for you guys. But until that comes in right now, the Dave, even as an all-in-one, is still playing. What are some of its caveats? Well, one of the caveats is very expensive. This is a 10,400 pound unit. That is some serious money. That's, that's, that's decent used car territory money. You can buy a nice Mercedes with that. 
Um, so if you are thinking about price and the day, uh, it's obviously something that is not for you, right? Um, fighting in your means, but as an all-in-one, I still think it's world-class. It's truly fantastic. Build quality, just like all quality products, is exceptional. So that's the only caveat, I think, for this as an all-in-one, as a tiny unit, as amplification, pre and DAC, it's fantastic. And look how much room it takes up. It's like 14 inches and that's it. And you don't need a slew of other stuff, unless you're a reviewer. I think it will drive most of your headphones very, very well. The outliers being the Sasvaras and I think the AB1266 TC does better, much, much better than the Sasvaras, but still, it's, a, it's another very hard to drive headphone. I'm surprised the Stealth is utterly exceptional on it. That, that, that was one thing that really shocked me because I think uh, I thought it would have really just failed and it didn't. It's exceptional on it. So conclusion, call Dave as an all-in-one, should you buy it? I think it should be worthy of your consideration, especially those of you who are into the tiny but mighty series and you want the smallest equipment, just like this Gaila Pi. Oh my goodness, this thing's palm-sized. Wait for the review for that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very interesting. It can drive 1266TC perfectly well. And if that's not an indicator, I don't know what is. Um, bearing that in mind, that they makes a fantastic all-in-one system, a tiny all-in-one system that you can take on the go to hotels and things, and amplification, DAC, pre, power supplies, all inside the same unit. As an all-in-one, Five Tigers out of five. Still incredible in 2023. With that, we will have to love you and leave you until the next review. But if you fancy reviews such as this and you can't get enough of these reviews, consider joining Patreon where early reviews are piled on there first before YouTube where you get to join the private Telegram chat and speak to us in regards to equipment coming in for review and where the conversation never really stops. If not, your like, your share, your subscribe is all I require from you. Give me a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the Dave. Have you experienced it? Do you own it? Have you heard it as shows? Overhyped? Underhyped? What do you think? Let's discuss and I'll see you down there in a moment.